are chemical sunscreens harmful to skin of color? That's a question that's going to be asked throughout this video, which by the way, hi, welcome back to the Sound Beauty Doctor here on YouTube. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking to several skin of color experts, estheticians, dermatologists, people that if you combine their years of experience, we've got probably over a century's worth of skin of color knowledge. There's been some back and forth lately about chemical sunscreens, do they cause hyperpigmentation? Are they harmful? Should we be avoiding them? These are the questions. We want answers, so keep watching. You guys, I'm gonna put timestamps so to make this the flow of this video easier because some of you guys said that you watch a video and then you wanna come back to something and the timestamps help you to reference back but please watch this full video because there's lots of information in here. And what I don't want to happen is that sometimes people kind of get just a gist of something that someone's saying, and then they run with that without getting the full picture. And that's how a lot of misinformation uh, gets spread across the internet. So please make sure that you watch the full video. So here we go. So I've been a long time advocate for people of color to wear sunscreens. You know, even when it wasn't popular. <laughs> uh, but I have two playlists on sunscreens for dark skin. One general one that includes chemical sunscreens and one specifically for mineral sunscreens. This year I've been testing a lot of mineral sunscreens. So I will link those playlists above and below as well as a blog post that details, you know, some of the best ones that I've tried so far. Now that's a blog post that gets updated as I try more mineral sunscreens. So make sure you bookmark it and check it often to see if I've updated it. And you know, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn your notification bell on so that you don't miss an upload. So as someone who I myself personally like a chemical sunscreen for me myself personally, you know, we'll get into um, who may need to look at mineral versus chemical and all that stuff as we deep dive into this video. Um, I started to hear things such as the heat that chemical sunscreens release when they absorb the UV rays can cause hyperpigmentation and skin of color. And there's been like a general kind of like, even from some of the comments that I get from people in a lot of my sunscreen videos that, you know, chemical sunscreen should be avoided. They're bad for skin of color. And I was like, who said that? So I became an investigative reporter and I went undercover, deep undercover. No, I just used the resources that were available to me since I've been a blogger and a freelance beauty writer for a long time. So I reached out to some skin of color professionals. First up, I spoke with Deja Ayadeli. She is an esthetician and the CEO of West Room Aesthetics in the UK. She also started the Black Skin Directory UK, which is a directory that helps pair patients who have skin of color with skin of color experts. So I will link her information in the description box. So make sure you check that out. You know, I sent her a DM and I'm like, you know, I've been hearing a lot about chemical sunscreens. You know, I would love to know what your thoughts are. And she sent me a video. So let's check out what Deja had to say. Next. Hi, Danielle. Thank you for asking me to contribute to your video. Um, so the question you asked me was, are chemical screens, sunscreens, I should say, um, dangerous or um, bad for black skin? Now, I've done some digging around um, in the literature that's available. And from what I can see and what I have always believed is that, no, su chemical sunscreens are not dangerous for, for darker skins. I guess um, from the rumors that you've heard or what you know people are saying to you on your platform, as you told me, was that... Um, they can cause, the, the, the heat reaction um, can cause post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Um, and from what I can see again from the literature and from my own personal experience, it would have to be a very significant heat reaction in the in the sort of mechanism of the sunscreen to be able to cause any type of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It's not that significant to cause PIH at a cellular level. So I, I can't see anything that would suggest that at all. Likewise, you know, I have heard of things like, you know, some people having maybe like an allergic reaction to the, the ingredients in the chemical sunscreen, which can cause maybe something like um, 
a prickly heat sort of rash and uh, but, but that in itself isn't post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation say for example if that happened on white skin you may get it looking like redness so erythema but obviously on dark skin you know black skin doesn't go red per se so that will come across as a darkening of the skin which um, obviously it, it does look a little bit like um, a hyperpigmentation but it's not what would class as you know post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation which is what I think the queries you were getting was were, were insinuating so now I think for the interest of, of confusion or for saving um, people hunting around for this information I, I can you know happily and confidently say that chemical sunscreens are are fine for black skin um, obviously the choice is yours if you want to use a chemical or whether you want to use a, um, a physical mineral sunscreen but the choice is absolutely there and I'm just very pleased that you know as a demographic we now have several several um, choices of um, sun protection available to us in a variety of different types of formulas so rather than um, actually sort of perpetuate a very confusing message about whether you know chemical sunscreens creates um, you know a post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation in black skin you know I think that is a myth that needs to be squashed um, because we really want you know people that look like like you and I with darker skin tones to adhere to the the application of sunscreen you know not just necessarily from a potential of um, you know skin cancer point of view which obviously we know is lower in darker skin but having said that you know that that possibility still exists um, but also from the sort of concerns that we tend to experience which are quite distressing or, or you know I tend to find my, my clients quite distressed about it you know things like hyperpigmentation and, and premature aging of the skin um, fine lines and wrinkles you know sunscreen does help to prevent you know against those those concerns so for me, I, I am very, I'm very happy to recommend chemical sunscreen. Likewise, I'm also very comfortable to recommend a physical sunscreen if that is what the client wants. What is important to me is that it is being used um, and it's been used correctly. But it's also very important to um, squash the rumours uh, and myths that um, chemical sunscreen causes post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation because there's nothing in the literature or research that actually tells us that. So until research comes out to, to that effect, um, I would say that this isn't anything that we need to be concerned about at the moment. So I hope that helps and you know if you have any other questions obviously do feel free to reach out. Talk to you later. So thank you to Deja for that. I am looking forward to having more conversations with her um, about skincare. She also has a YouTube channel here as well as an Instagram page. So I'll link both of those below as well as the link to the Black Skin Directory. So for those of you who are in the UK, um, you can have some resources on where to go to find a pro uh, that specializes in skin of color. Next up, I reached out to the Skin of Color Society, which is an international professional organization devoted to the awareness and the promotion of skin of color education, research, mentoring, networking. It's an amazing organization. I've gone to a couple of their events over the years. They do these luncheons and these mixers where they have tons of dermatologists of color, um, you know, mixing with people of the media, you know, bloggers, people from the magazine world and so on and so forth. And I've always appreciated going to their events because I've always gotten to connect with lots of experts that help me to create content and, you know, just enrich my mind with skin information. So I reached out to them and they set me up with so many amazing dermatologists. One of the interviews that I did with Dr. Pearl Grimes is going to be a separate video of its own. Make sure you check it out, subscribe and turn on that notification bell. But doctor, the interview with Dr. Pearl Grimes is separate because she was one of the dermatologists involved in a study with, on iron oxides, um, which is another key component to a lot of this sunscreen talk. So make sure you check out that video as well. So next up, I had a chat with Dr. Cheryl M. Burgess. She's a board certified dermatologist. She's actually one of the co-founders of Black Opal, the makeup line that we all know and love. She's based in the Washington DC area and she also founded the Center for Dermatology and Dermatologic Surgery in Washington. So let's hear what Dr. Burgess had to say. They're kind of demonizing the chemical sunscreens for a few reasons. One, 
there are there can be allergic contact dermatitis with it and people can break out like i know if i put on an avobenzone that next day i have little fine bumps on my face um it's not as bad if i really don't have anything else and i want to put something on i'll grab it and put it on but i try to have my son block with me all the time so that I can apply it. And then I'll mix it a little bit with my foundation and put it on and it goes on sheer. The chemical, other than the contact dermatitis, is a little bit oilier. So you can see people clog their pores. Mm -hmm. And so some people will say, I, I, you know, I get acne behind it. That's why I don't like to wear it. Or my acne patients, like, it just makes my acne worse. So again, the drier, more pastier one, which is the zinc containing ones are going to be better for those types of patients. They go on a little bit drier and not oily. Mm -hmm. um, so those are kind of the main things. If you have an allergic reaction, yes, we tend to get inflamed and get red. And yeah, that will present itself later down the road as hyperpigmentation. So I wouldn't say the preparation causes hyperpigmentation, but it can cause conditions that can cause hyperpigmentation like acne or contact dermatitis. Outside of any kind of like environmental precautions, is there a reason why people with skin of color should avoid a chemical sunscreen? No, no, okay. they're still on the market. Mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the U.S., avobenzone seems to be the more popular ingredient. Mm -hmm. um, and, and no, people can use them. They need to use them in the appropriate way. In, in essence, every two hours you should reapply. Um, but the main thing about the sun filters that mm -hmm. are in sunscreens is that they will tend, when, when sun hits them, it causes that oxidation, which then, you know, your antioxidants and things in the chemical. So it breaks, it breaks it down. That's mm -hmm. why it's necessary to put up, reapply it every to two reapply. hours. To mm reapply. -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people put it on the morning and say, oh, I put on my sunscreen. I'm like, how often did you put it on? <laughs> and then you have women who wear makeup and then they're like, well, I just can't, you know, put it on um over my makeup it messes up my makeup and all this but like i tell women keep in mind that particularly mineral um powders are sun protection mm -hmm. so um that's you know the zinc and all those those are minerals that's that's why we kind of put it in that category so my last question now i know this can be something that may not pertain to us here in america um because we only have a certain amount of uv filters but is there any literature or anything that you might know about um some of the other the popular filters like tinosaur they're great they're great i i do some consulting work with a company called isden out of barcelona and they are known for their sunscreens they have a sunscreen for everything the only one mm -hmm. that is available in the u.s which had to be fda approved is um air fatana Mm -hmm. And Aeropatana actually is a sunscreen that also reverses sun damage. So wow. Just, yeah, anybody that I have who has pre-skin cancers or anything like that, I will tend to put them on that sunscreen. But mm -hmm. I've done clinical research with them as well. And whenever I'm over there, I, <laughs> I get on the sunscreen because a lot of them we don't have here. And actually... Yeah. Anna I had before we actually had the approval here. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are sunscreens with antioxidants in them. The, the formulations are all very different and antioxidants are great because we know that the antioxidants are, are also photoprotective. We don't classify them as a sunscreen or anything like that but they are, um, they are beneficial. So that's why I tell patients, you know, you're doing the anti-aging and you're putting vitamin C on, well, at least you're doing something. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, for a reason, the US and the FDA, they, they're very particular about what we use. And, and to what you were saying is, 
there's this theory of the nanoparticles, which are, they're so, so tiny that they get into the pore and you absorb them into the skin. So there's a lot of technology out there. It's kind of new technology. And so there's a question, do we want to have nanoparticles in sunscreen? So they look at that kind of thing. So, so I welcome the FDA when they, you know, want us to research it before they just let loose and let it go. I would love to go to Korea one day, uh, South Korea one day. Oh my gosh, you know now that's the-, the place to go. That is the place to go. I was in Korea and Vietnam and China like one year after the next. I was lecturing mm-hmm. over there and you, it will blow your mind. And some of the things that I saw back then, we're just now kind of getting. So it's wonderful. There, we're about an eight year difference mm. in technology and all of that. It's, it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I've tried a couple of the the um, Korean sunscreens, and even their um, inorganic formulas, I feel like are like light years ahead. But from what you said, it's because they're um, the nanoparticles because they make the inorganic UV filter. Is that a thing? Right. right. Okay. The they make them really yeah. small so that they're not so detectable on the skin. You know, those nanoparticles can get into the bloodstream, and we don't know yet how harmful that is over right. time. So okay. Yeah. That's the deal with, you know, uh, protecting your skin. And like I said, I didn't really dive into the medical reasons because it mm-hmm. you have something like lupus or something mm-hmm. like that. You do have changes that are in the skin and we're trying to prevent those changes by, by putting you on sunscreen. So it's not always, oh, you're going to the beach or, you know, something. Yeah, like that. gotcha, so gotcha. That's, that's pretty much uh, the gist of, of, of why we do recommend. And I know Pearl, if you interviewed her, she is a stickler on that. So next up, I spoke with board certified dermatologist, Dr. Seamal Desai. Dr. Desai actually served as the president of the Skin of Color Society from 2017 through 2019. He is also the president and medical director for the Innovative Dermatology PA in Plano, Texas. And he's also a clinical assistant professor of dermatology at the University of Texas Southwestern. So let's get into our chat. I love watching your stuff. Oh, wow. Thank you. I do. I really do. I saw I saw the one you just did about I don't know if you just did it, but I saw the one you did with um, why have people of color been neglected with sunscreens? Yes, 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 yes. I saw that one. You did a good job with that. Thank you. So now there's some rumors brewing, though, Dr. Desai, about um, sunscreens, especially when it comes to the chemical sunscreens. So here's my thing on chemical sunscreens. I Mm -hmm. do allow my patients of color to use chemical sunscreens. However, I always do caveat it that, in my opinion, inorganic sunscreens, a.k.a. physical sunscreens, are better if for me and my patient population, because you are less likely to have an allergic contact or irritant contact dermatitis from a physical blocker ingredient like zinc or titanium mm-hmm. than you are with a chemical ingredient. Now, now I'm not saying every patient mm-hmm. has that. It's not mm-hmm. that common. Chemical mm-hmm. sunscreens are fantastic when if you find one that you like that's elegant. But is there more risk of irritation from a chemical sunscreen than a physical? Yes. And mm-hmm. if you get that irritation and your darker skin like you and me, then you, yes, can get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from that. So it's kind of a secondary link, if that makes sense. Well, it seems as if the piece that people are missing when they think that chemical sunscreens cause hyperpigmentation, the piece that they're missing is that some people have an irritation to chemical sunscreens and that irritation can then cause hyperpigmentation as opposed to the chemical sunscreens themselves causing hyperpigmentation. That, that would be correct. And, okay. and I am, my philosophy on sunscreens is, the, you know, people ask me, what's your favorite brand or what do you like or which one are you going to recommend? My answer to that is the one that you will use consistently. Mm-hmm. Because every patient's skin type is different. Everyone's level of what they cosmetically feel elegant with is different. I have mm-hmm. a lot of people who love the chemical sunscreens that are liquid mm-hmm. because they like that it goes on very liquidy and smooth and runny so they can rub it. And mm-hmm. then I've got patients who like 
the physical blocker sunscreens that come as thick creams because they want the tinted physical blocker, for example, to almost serve as a matte foundation on their skin. Mm -hmm. and, and then I've got patients who don't want the really thick white chalky sunscreens, especially my patients of color, because it just makes us look ghost white and pale. So right. I, I like how you said that, and I completely agree with that statement. Okay, perfect. Now, um, my other question, I know you're very busy, so I'm going to keep it short. But uh, my other question is, I know they're not um, FDA approved in the US, but I was wondering if you had any thoughts on some of the organic filters, UV filters that are available outside of the US, like Tinosorb S&M. Well, yes. M, Tinosorb M is actually an inorganic filter, right? That is inorganic. Okay, okay. But to, to your point, there are lots of ingredients that are available. For example, the European FDA, if you look at what they have approved in Europe, we, they have actually a lot more variety of ingredients than we do. Mm -hmm. And so part of sunscreen reform work that we've been doing in our advocacy with the FDA has been to increase and speed up our ability here in the States to get some of those ingredients because there are really scientifically studied chemical filters that are available in European sunscreens that we don't have access to here. And some of those are even formulated in very elegant forms for patients of color. I, when, when I travel, I always try to look and see what they have in these other countries, especially in the Middle East and even mm -hmm. in India is the same. A mm -hmm. lot of sunscreens there are much more elegant for patients of color than what we have here. Now, we, we're really lucky that mm -hmm. we have some really good cosmeceutical companies that back their sunscreens up with science and a really elegant ingredient profile but we need more ingredients filters here for sure. I definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a question that I get sometimes because while a majority of my audience are American, I do have people that live in, you know, the UK, Australia, you know, all over the world. There's certain things in the um, filters that are available outside of the US that skin of color need to look for. Um, I, from what I understand, I think that they have the nanoparticles and that's kind of why they're not available here in the US because we still need to do testing on whether that, yeah, yeah. You're, you're exactly right, because those those filters haven't been tested yet robustly. Even though there is science, the FDA wants to see more. And, mm -hmm. and that, that makes sense. And, you know, you may have even seen in some of the research and some of your viewers may have heard of this concept called GRACE, G-R-A-S-E, when mm -hmm. that stands for generally regarded as safe and effective. That mm -hmm. is a classification the FDA gives these type of ingredients, especially of products that are available over the counter. And unless you're considered GRACE, then you're not recommended as a sunscreen. So these studies have to prove to the FDA that they can classify your ingredient as grace. Okay. Uh, and now one of the other things I will mention, I'm glad you asked that question because it made me rem remind to mention something to you about iron oxide. Mm -hmm. Iron oxide is an ingredient that is critical in my opinion to helping block the effects of UV light or mm -hmm. incandescent lighting or LED light. I mean, all the device, I mean, you sitting in front of your iPad phone, all the, that, that visible light has been actually shown to have synergistic effects with UVA. And what that basically means is you take visible light and UVA light from the atmosphere, you combine them together, patients of color are more prone to hyperpigmentation and skin damage with that combination. So for mm -hmm. our populations in particular, we need more work on blocking visible light because the main filter that does that right now is iron oxide. The problem is there's very few cosmetically acceptable products that contain iron oxide that's not gonna make you look ashy and ghost-like. Okay. So iron oxide is a big unmet need and that's what's being worked on a lot right now in helping to block visible light. And, and visible light also, by the way, is a big trigger for things like melasma, and sunspots and dark spots, and it really has been shown to link to that as well. I definitely think that wanting to get products that contain iron oxide along with other sunscreen filters mm -hmm. that can be cosmetically elegant is what we need to shoot for. So for our next conversation, I spoke with board certified dermatologist, Dr. Corey Hartman. Dr. Hartman is the founder and medical director of Skin Wellness Dermatology in Birmingham, Alabama. And as you can see, a lot of our experts are from all over the US. You know, you can find a skin of color expert. Um, they're not just in New York and California. So here's the conversation that I had with Dr. Hartman. What are your thoughts in general on chemical sunscreens? Well, I'm just happy that people are talking about sunscreens and people of color all together, right? Can yes, we just yes. all agree that that's a, an important conversation that we all need to be having? Um, and I personally like to promote the use of physical sunscreens. I like minerals better. And the reasons are... Um, 
they just, you know, don't have the same potential to cause a lot of problems. It seems like every few years, you know, there are about 16 chemicals that are used in different combinations, various combinations in different chemical sunscreens. And every few years, we seem to have another issue or some question about um, how that chemical is impacting us. Is it getting into our bloodstream? Do we know what that's doing to us? You know, is it affecting pregnant women? Is it causing renal cancer? It just seems like for the past, since I've been in dermatology, I finished residency in 2006. And it seems like every three or four years, there's like more and more and more. And if you can just avoid that altogether, that's what I say. Now, the, the flip side of that has been that the chemical, the physical sunscreens, the minerals, were historically not very elegant for people like me and you with brown skin because it would make us look like clowns and iridescent. So nobody wants to look like that. You don't want to use that. But we know that they've always been safer. And instead of having to rely on a reaction to take place, we know that they just form a shield that the light is just completely reflected off of. So that's a little bit of background. I think that the issue for me is that 25% of people are going to be allergic to chemicals and sunscreen. And it's hard to predict who you who it is if you're gonna be one of those people. And then once you have identified that you have an issue with the sunscreen, like I said, they're put like four or five chemicals in each one. So it's not really that easy to delineate which chemical it is. So when we have inflammation in our skin, as you know, that causes degradation of keratinocytes, which releases melanin, which reproduce in higher numbers because we have larger melanosomes. And then we get hyperpigmentations. That theory about, um, the, the chemicals and the reaction. I don't know much about it, so I don't want to speak mm. on it. Um, mm. I've not seen anything to support it is what I meant to say. My concern okay. about chemical sunscreens really has to do with their ability to irritate. So mm. it, I, I just didn't want to leave you with the impression that I endorse those studies at all. Okay. I'm just saying if you think about the mechanism, you know, there, it, it could be just because of the fact that anything that promotes inflammation, if they can provide a link between the reaction and inflammation, then there may be something there. That's all. That okay. There are, you know, of course, some organic filters, UV filters that are available outside of the U S um, most dermatologists that I speak to, they, uh, they know of their existence, but, you know, obviously since they're not, um, FDA approved here in the U S you know, a lot, no, you know, they're not going to, uh, endorse them. But what do you think of some of these other organic UV filters, like Tinosorb, for example? Yeah, so Tinosorb, I'm not um, well versed in as, as much as because we don't have it available here. But mm -hmm. it seems to be a product that we would all, you know, really love. Um, mm -hmm. Organic, clean, those are all attributes that everybody's looking for these days. Um, it's not as chemical laden as some of the ones that we rely on for our chemical sunscreens in the United States. And the research that I have done on those seems like it would be a favorable product to use. Um, okay. I like the fact that it is um, able to absorb both UVA and UVB rays. So mm -hmm. um, it has a lot of promise. And we know that we're usually the last ones to catch on to the good stuff over here in the good old USA. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Do you have any chemical? Well, it seems like you like the mineral sunscreens more. Do you have any that you would that you particularly recommend? Well, I do like Mexoral, and okay. um, I think that La Roche has done a great job, um, and they have done. Uh, you know, their sunscreens have been elegant and tested, and they've always sort of led the pack. So. Um, I, I do recommend their products with Anthelios, um, mm. as if, if I'm going to recommend a chemical sunscreen. Uh, and then the ones that I like that contain minerals that go on very elegantly and do not leave a chalky film. Um, my favorite is by Isden. It's called Aeropetona Actinica. It is a um, zinc oxide based sunscreen that also has some antioxidants in it. And it's mm. a, a thin emulsion. So it's not going to feel heavy or greasy. I have it on right now. I wear it every day. Uh, it's good for people with oilier skin, acne-prone skin. Um, that's a great one. And then there's another one by Illumier called Sheer Hydration. That's also really good. That's one that's better for people who have um, drier skin, who are looking for a heavier sort of cream. And it mm -hmm. has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. So there are, um, there, there are sunscreens in every category that I like and recommend. If you want to find out more information on any of the experts that were featured in today's video i will leave that linked below in the description box a lot of them are on social media so i will leave that information uh below as well so a couple of things that i got from today's video 
one, when it comes to dermatologists and, you know, from speaking to the ones that I spoke to for this video and just from what I've heard from dermatologists over the years, they do tend to be very conservative when it comes to giving advice to the general public. Now, the type of advice that they give to their patients, of course, is going to vary on a case by case basis because, you know, not everyone's the same. But dermatologists do see the worst of the worst cases out there. So I do think that they tend to be more conservative when it comes to um, certain ingredients that they tell us to use. Like a lot of them love for us to use fragrance free products um, because, you know, the, the least amount of exposure to irritation that one has, <laughs> the less likely you are to have a reaction and the type of reaction that may cause you to have to see a dermatologist in the first place. A lot of them do advocate for mineral sunscreens and the reason for that is some people do have irritation to chemical sunscreens. I've noticed from just from the interactions that I've had with people who have followed me over the years that I've had people say oh I can't wear sunscreen at all I'm allergic to it and then I'll be like oh, well, why don't you try a mineral sunscreen? And then oftentimes the conversation, you know, kind of follows up with, well, what's that? And, you know, then it also follows up with, oh my God, I tried a mineral sunscreen and it was fine for me. So I think more education is needed. I, I do believe that a lot of people don't realize that there is a difference between a chemical and a mineral sunscreen. Some people may not even know that <laughs> there are different types of sunscreen. And I kind of figured that out when I started to do my mineral sunscreen videos and a lot of the comments were like, well, why don't you try black girl sunscreen? And that's when I realized that, okay, people don't realize that that's a chemical sunscreen. And while I'm not saying chemical sunscreens are bad, I actually prefer chemical sunscreens, but people don't realize that, you know, there's a difference between chemical and mineral and what those differences are. Um, and if you're someone like that, it's fine. We're here to learn and um, I'm here to give you the information, as much information as I can in my videos and in my blog posts. So if you're someone that you're still kind of stuck on this topic, definitely take the time and go through my old videos, go through my blog posts, and you'll get the information there as well. Another thing that I, I feel that you should probably take from this video is if you're someone with a very special or specific need when it comes to skincare, like if there's certain ingredients that you avoid or you know certain conditions, medical conditions that you have, because certain medical conditions, especially autoimmune conditions, can make you a little bit more sensitive to certain ingredients. You have to do a little bit more extra research and be more discerning when you get your information. And that's particularly important when you're digesting lots of information because not everyone is going to have that same specific situation that you have. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you got a lot out of this particular subject because it's something that has been an ongoing topic, something that even had me like, wait, what? Make sure you check out my video on iron oxides and sunscreens because I think that's another um, important topic and route that we need to go down when it comes to sunscreens. I'm out. Follow me on social. The links will be in the description box. And I'll see you fine folks in my next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>